Hello everyone and welcome back to the set 2 of L1 parsing solve problems. In this session we are going to observe some more interesting solve problems. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today we are going to observe four solve problems on whether a grammar is L1. Consider the first question. Find out whether the following grammar is L1. So this is the grammar given. We need to find out whether it is capable for L1 parsing or not. So let's try to solve it. Now as you can observe, there are three non-terminals involved in this grammar. So let's find out the first and follows of them. Now coming to B. B has got two different production rules. B can be rewritten as small b, that is this terminal. Or it can also be rewritten as epsilon. So in the first of B, we are going to include the symbols small b and epsilon. Now just like B, observe A, it is also involved in two different production rules and it can generate either this terminal small a or epsilon. Therefore, in the first of A, we are going to enlist the symbols small a and epsilon. Now what about S? Observe the production rule. S can be rewritten as capital A followed by capital B. Now in the first of A, we have the symbols small a and epsilon. Now since small a is a terminal symbol, therefore in the first of s, we are going to include the terminal symbol small a. Now a can also generate epsilon. So in case a generate epsilon, in that case, b will become the only non-terminal on the right hand side. So we have to consider the first of b as well. Observe the first of b. We have got the terminal symbol small b and epsilon. So if A generates epsilon and thereafter this non-terminal capital B generates the terminal symbol B, in that case B will be the terminal that will be generated during the process of derivation from S. Therefore, in the first of S, alongside the terminal symbol small a, we are going to include the terminal symbol small b. Now observe, both A and B can generate epsilon. So if both of them generate epsilons, in that case it will mean that S is producing empty string. So alongside A and B, we are also going to include the symbol epsilon in the first of S. Let's now figure out the follows. As you can observe, S being the start symbol doesn't really appear in any of the right hand side of any of the productions. Therefore, naturally in the follow of S, we will include the dollar symbol. Now let's find out the follow of A. So this is the production rule where A appears in the right hand side. And as you can see, a is being followed by the non-terminal capital B. And since it is a non-terminal, we are supposed to consider the first of it. So let's consider the first of B. Observe, we have got the symbols small b and epsilon in the first of B. So if B generates small b, in that case, this capital A will be followed by the terminal symbol small b. Therefore, in the follow of A, we are going to include the terminal symbol small b. Now notice carefully, B can also generate epsilon, isn't it? So in case B generates epsilon, that will make A the only symbol on the right hand side. Therefore, whatever will follow S, that is the left hand side, is supposed to follow the right hand side. So alongside the terminal symbol small b, we are also going to include the follow of S, that is dollar symbol in the follow of A. Now what about the follow of B? Observe, B is the rightmost symbol on the right hand side in this production. So naturally, whatever is supposed to follow S will also follow B. Therefore, in the follow of B, we are going to include the symbol dollar. Let's now construct the L1 parsing table. So we have got these three non-terminals. So what about the terminal symbols? We have got A, we have also got B, and alongside these two, we are going to include the symbol dollar as well. Now in the first of S, we have the symbol A, B and Epsilon. And S has got only a single production rule. So under the terminal symbols A and B, we are going to place the production rule S can be written as A, B in both the cases. Now coming to the first of A, we have got the terminal symbol small a. Therefore in the column of A for the row of capital A non-terminal, we are going to place the production rule A can be written as small a, that is this particular production rule. Now let's figure out B. As you can see, in the first of B, we have got the terminal symbol small b. Therefore, in the column of B, we are going to keep the production rule B can be rewritten as small b. Now we are done with all the terminal symbols in the firsts of all the non-terminals. Now interestingly enough, all of them can generate epsilon. 
Therefore, we need to consider the follow sets for them. Now, in the follow of S, we have the dollar symbol. Therefore, in the column of dollar for the non-terminal S, we are going to place the production rule S can be written as capital A followed by capital B. Try to understand this. This particular production rule will be used by the predictive L1 parser in case the grammar ever generates epsilon or empty strings. Now, in the follow of A, we have got the symbols small b and dollar. Therefore, the production rule A can be written as epsilon, that is A can directly derive epsilon, will be placed in the columns of small b and dollar. Now, finally, B's follow set includes the dollar symbol. So, the production rule B can be written as epsilon will be placed under the dollar symbol. Now, notice this table. All of the records have single entries. Therefore, clearly, this grammar happens to be an L1 grammar. Let's move on to the next question. So, this is the grammar which has been provided to us. We have to find out whether this is L1 or not. So, let's solve it. Let's now find out the first and follow of all the non-terminals. Now, as you can see, A has got two different production rule, that is A can be written as small c or it can generate epsilon as well. Therefore, in the first of A, we are going to include the symbols small c and epsilon. Now, what about S? S has got two different production rule, that is S can be written as small a followed by capital S and capital A or it can directly generate epsilon. Considering this particular production rule, this is pretty evident that in the first of S, we are going to include this small a. Now, considering the other production rule, S can also derive epsilon. Therefore, in the first of S, we are going to include the symbols small a and epsilon. Now, let's find out the follows. Now, S happens to be the start symbol. Therefore, in the follow of S, we will naturally include the symbol dollar. Additionally, in this particular production rule, S appears on the right hand side. And here, it is being followed by capital A. So, now we have to consider the first of A. Now, in the first of A, we generate the terminal symbol small c. So, if A generates c, in that case, S will be followed by the terminal symbol small c. So, clearly, in the follow set of S, we are going to include the terminal symbol small c as well. Now, let's find out the follow of A. Observe, this is the production rule where A appears in the right hand side. And here, a happens to be the rightmost element on the right hand side. Therefore, whatever is supposed to follow S, that is the start symbol, will also follow A. And in the follow set of S, we have the symbols dollar and small c. Therefore, in follow of A, we will also have the same symbols. Now we are done finding all the first and follows. Let's now create the L1 parsing table. So these are the two non terminals involved in this grammar. Now, what about the terminal symbols? We have got A, we have got C, and alongside these two, we are going to consider the dollar symbol as well. Now, in the first of S, we have the terminal symbol small a. And the production rule which can generate small a is this one. Therefore, the production rule S can be written as small a followed by capital S followed by capital A will be placed under the column of small a. Now, S is also capable of generating epsilon. Therefore, we need to consider the follow set of that. Now, in the follow set, we have the dollar symbol and the non-terminal C. So, the production rule S can be written as epsilon will be placed in the column of dollar and in the column of C. Now, what about A? Observe the first of A. We have got the terminal symbol C. So, the production rule A can be written as small c will be kept in the column of small c. Now, in the first of A, we also have the symbol epsilon. So, we need to consider the follow set of that. So, the production rule A can be written as epsilon will be placed in the columns of dollar and in the column of C as well. Now, observe this L1 parsing table. Specifically, focus on this particular record. In this record, we have two different entries. That means, the L1 parser will get confused in case it has A in the stack and at the same time, the look ahead symbol is C. It won't understand which of these two production rules to select in case the situation has this. So, clearly, this particular grammar is not an L1 grammar. Let's now move on to the next question. So, this is the grammar and we have to find out whether this is capable of L1 parsing or not. So, let's try to solve it. Now, as you can observe, there are four non-terminals involved in this grammar. 
So let's begin with finding the firsts and follow of these. Now observe the production rule for C. C can be either rewritten as small c following capital C or it can also be rewritten as epsilon. So in the first of C, we are going to include the symbols small c and epsilon. Now what about B? B can be rewritten as small a followed by capital B or epsilon. So just like C in the first of B, we are going to include the symbols small a and epsilon. Now let's find out the first of A. Now A is involved in two different production rules. Consider the first one. Here, in order to find out the first of A, we need to look into the first of B, isn't it? Now in first of B, we have got the symbols A and epsilon. So in case B generates A, in the first of A, we will also include the terminal symbol A. Now in the first of B, we also have got the symbol epsilon. So if B generates epsilon, in that case, Small b will be the only terminal derived from a. So alongside the terminal symbol small a, in the first of a, we will also include the terminal symbol small b. Now consider the second production rule. Here in order to find the first of a, we need to look into the first of c. Now in the first of c, we have got the symbols small c and epsilon. So if c generates small c, in that case, in the first of a, we will also include the terminal symbol small c. However, if C generates epsilon, in that case, D will be the only terminal in the right hand side. Therefore, in the first of A, alongside A, B and C, we will also include the terminal symbol small d. Now what about the first of S? In order to find out the first of S, we need to look into the first of A. And in the first of A, we have got all the terminal symbols A, B, C and D. Therefore, in the first of S, we will have them as well. Let's now find out the follows. As you can observe, S is the start symbol and it doesn't really appear in any of the right hand side of any of the productions. Therefore, naturally for the follow of S, we will have the symbol dollar. Now coming to the follow of A, A appears in this particular production rule. And here, A happens to be the rightmost element in the right hand side. Therefore, whatever is supposed to follow S will also follow A. So in the follow set of A, we are also going to include the symbol dollar. Now what about the follow of B? Considering this production rule, B is being followed by small b. And here, this non-terminal capital B is the rightmost element on the right hand side. So it will naturally follow whatever will follow B, that is the left hand side B. So since this is redundant, therefore, considering this particular production rule, we can state in the follow of B, we are going to include the terminal symbol small b. Now what about the follow of C? Consider this production rule. Here it is being followed by the terminal symbol D and observe this particular production rule. Here it is redundant. So in the follow of C, we are going to include the terminal symbol small d. Now we have found out all the firsts and follow of all the non-terminals. Let's now create the L1 parsing table. Now what are the terminals involved in this grammar? A, B, C, D and alongside these four, we are also going to consider the dollar symbol. Now coming to S, it has got only a single production rule and in the first of S, we have the symbol small a, small b, small c and small d. Therefore, this particular production rule will be placed underneath the columns of a, b, c and d. Now coming to a, in the first of a, we have got the symbols a, b, c and d. However, a is involved in two different production rules. Now using this production rule, we can either generate A because in the first of B, we have the symbol A or we can generate small b in case B generates epsilon. Therefore, in the columns of A and B, we are going to place the production rule A can be rewritten as capital B followed by small b. Now consider this production rule. Using this, we can either derive C or D. So the production rule A can be written as capital C followed by small d will be placed under the columns of C and D. Now what about B? In the first of B we have got the symbol small a and the production rule which can generate A is this one. So the production rule B can be written as small a followed by capital B will be placed in here. Now coming to C, in the first of C we have the terminal symbol small c. And in order to generate small c, this is the production rule which should be used. So under the column of small c, we are going to place the production rule c can be written as small c followed by capital C. Now apart from s and a, b and c can also generate epsilons. So we need to consider the follow sets of those. 
Now for B, we have got small b in the follow set. Therefore, the production rule B can be rewritten as epsilon will be placed underneath the column of B. And in the follow of C, we have got the terminal symbol D. So in the column of D, we will place the production rule C can be rewritten as epsilon. Now look at the L1 parsing table. None of the records have multiple entries. Therefore, this particular grammar is clearly an L1 grammar. Let's now move on to the next question. So this is the grammar which has been given. Let's figure out whether it is capable for L1 parsing or not. And we are going to start off by finding the firsts and follows of all the non-terminals. Now consider A. Observe the production rules A is involved in. A can be rewritten as small a, small b followed by capital S. Or A can also be rewritten as epsilon. Now consider this particular production. Here, small a happens to be the first terminal that will be generated from capital A during the process of derivation. And A can also generate epsilon. Therefore, in the first of A, we are going to include the symbols small a and epsilon. Now, what about the first of S? S has got two different production rules as well. S can be rewritten as small a followed by capital A followed by small a. Or it can also be rewritten as epsilon. So, considering these two production rules, in the first of S, we are going to include the symbols small a and epsilon. Now, let's figure out the follows. Now, S is the start symbol, so evidently in the follow of S, we will have the dollar symbol. Additionally, this is the production rule where S appears in the right hand side. And according to this one, whatever will follow A is supposed to follow S as well. So, in order to find out the follow of S, we actually need to find out the follow of A first. So, let's find out the follow of A now. Now, this is the production rule where A appears in the right hand side. And here, it is being followed by small a. Therefore, in the follow of A, we will have the terminal symbol small a. And this is the only terminal symbol which will follow A. Now we know what is supposed to follow the capital A. So we can now complete the follow set of S. So in the follow set of S alongside the dollar symbol, we will also keep the terminal symbol small a. So these are all the firsts and follows. Now observe the firsts and follows a bit carefully. For the non-terminal S, in both first and follow, we have the terminal symbol small a, don't we? Now considering this A in the L1 parsing table, this production rule will be enlisted underneath A. However, since S can also generate epsilon, so we will also need to consider the follow set. In that case, the production rule S can be rewritten as epsilon will be placed underneath A as well. So during parsing, the L1 parser will find two different entries for the same terminal symbol in the row of S. And the same can be stated for the row of A as well. As you can see, here also in the first and follow, we have got the terminal symbol A. So clearly, this particular grammar is not an L1 grammar. Now with this, we are done with all the problems that we were supposed to observe. Today, I also have one homework problem for all of you. I would like all of you to find out whether the following grammar is L1 or not. Observe. There are three different non-terminals involved in this grammar. So all you need to do is first find out the first and follows of all of them. Thereafter, try to construct the L1 parsing table in order to find out whether this grammar is L1 grammar or not. So all the best. In this session, we observed four solved problems on whether the grammar is L1 or not. All right, people, that will be all for this session. With this, we have come to the end of the chapter 3 of Compiler Design course. From the next session onwards, we will begin our journey of learning about the bottom-up parsers. So, I hope to see you in the next ones. Thank you all for watching.